If you're not a millionaire, it's not an issue of do you want to be. You have to be at least a millionaire, even a decamillionaire, if you're going to live any kind of life in your future. Who's ready to make that decision today? The difference between the rich and the poor, they decide to go there. The poor and middle class, they never decide. And some of you are trapped in middle class because you have so much, you, 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 don't, you're, you stop dreaming. You lost the hunger. You lost the fire. You got comfortable. And God is saying, wait a minute, we got buildings to build. Wait a minute, we're talking about the expansion of Jesus House Ministries. Wait a minute, we, we got some families to help. We got some, oh, come on, somebody help me up in here. He's saying, stop being so selfish. So what I want to share with you today are my three big mistakes. Because I think you can learn more from my mistakes than me standing up here bragging to you about how much money I have, right? Yes or yes? If we can eliminate your mistakes, we can accelerate the speed of you changing your financial life. Are you ready? Say, oh, yeah. Let's go in. Let's go right into it. Three mistakes. Mistake number one. Here's the big one. I thought, we can, put, we can put this on the screen for you. Mistake number one. I thought that if I became more spiritual, my money problems would take care of themselves. Oh, boy. I thought that if I just became more spiritual that my money problems would just take care of themselves. What I failed to realize is that I am a spiritual being in an economic world. Right? And the economic world is a real world in which I have to function. And in this economic world, I need money to be able to function in it. Because there's three constants about this economic world. God... How many know God's always going to be here, right? Two, gravity. If I leap, I'm going to come back down. Number three, gold, the three Gs. These are always a constant. People say, oh, the whole financial system's going to close down. No, it ain't. As long as there's a tree, mankind will print more money. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't listen to the doom and gloomers. No, 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 no. There will always be a currency here on the earth. That's a constant. It's steady. But see, I thought that if I just sought God and gave 10%, that God would just take care of me. And, and so many people in the church, they do that, and they, they're confused. They're like, I'm giving 10%. I'm going to church. I'm doing all my spiritual stuff. But my finances, I keep struggling. I keep hitting my head. That was me. And then I realized from my multi-million dollar mentor, he said, Keith, this is huge. He said, you can give 10% all your life, but still do wrong with the 90% and you will still stay broke. Because your assignment after the 10% as God's steward, everybody say, I'm a steward of God's money. Your assignment is to earn it, multiply it, and distribute it correctly. You see, it's only when you understand how to earn it and multiply. The king wants you to multiply and learn how to multiply what you do have. Multiplication creates speed. He never said, I want you to add. He rewarded the man who doubled what he had. Come on, somebody, help me here. Walk me with this. Are you walking with me? To the guy who had an abundance, he took from the guy who could not multiply it, and he gave it to the guy who could multiply it. Everybody say, I need multiply. I need to multiply. I need to multiply. I did not know how to multiply my money, so I went slow. That's why the world system teaches you addition. 
Just save just a little bit of money and put it, put it in the bank just a little, 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 little bit, little bit of money. And, and when you get older, you're going to be, voila, you're going to be having a great life in retirement. Come to, hey, if you're ever in Florida, everybody come to Florida. Come to Florida with me. Come look at the old seniors in Florida. At the first of every month, I can't get in the grocery store. You can't get in it. Why? Because there's a bunch of old people who bought into the old system, and, and they're waiting for their Social Security check to come in. And they get their little measly Social Security check, and they think, am I going to spend this on groceries? Do I buy medicine this week? Or do I buy gas? Is that what you want to be like? Is that your future? And you, then you better not, you better not, you better say, they did it the wrong way. I better go a new way. I better learn how to not add. I better learn to multiply. Because what they didn't teach the seniors of our generation was that your future is going to be way more expensive and you can't think increase. You must think multiplication. Come on now. That's why I love why the pastor said this is a year for increase. Woo-hoo. Everybody say woohoo. If all I had to do was tithe and all I had to do is get more spiritual, intercessors would be billionaires. Hmm. But I don't know about what you found, but I found the most intercessors are the most brokest people in the church. So you could get an A plus spiritually, but get an F minus. Because you don't have financial intelligence. Everybody say, I gotta grow my finance. Just touch your head. Say, I gotta, I gotta figure this out now. <laughs> it's mistake number two. I thought money wasn't important. I thought money wasn't important. Hmm. That's a big lie. Think about this. If I tell my wife, how many married people do we have here? Raise your hand if you're married, married people. Okay. All right. If you looked over at your wife and said, you're not important to me. Hmm? If I did that to my wife, she'd look at me, she'd get a Mexican anointing on her, and she'd say, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Whatever's not important stays away from you. And I got this religious mindset, oh, money's not important, and it stayed as far away from me as it possibly could. <clears throat> and I bought right into the strategy of the enemy. Watch this, there's two strategies. Strategy number one, he wants to get good people like you with tremendous earning potential to believe that their desire to get rich and have a lot of money is evil. That's his strategy. Gets you to think it's not important. The people who should have it. The second strategy, look at, how, look at how demonic this is. The second strategy of the enemy is to get bad people. To believe that the pursuit of money is a good pursuit so that they can get the most of it so you don't have any of it. Hmm. And that's when I started to realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. If God's called me to be a steward, that means a steward must keep the eye on the money. Everybody say, you got to keep an eye on your money. And what I find in the church is that people got their eye on God, but they don't have their eye on their money. Because you tell yourself it's not important. I did it. I did not know I was $180,000 in credit card debt because I kept telling myself money wasn't important. Until I had my come to Jesus and I lost everything. Now I know, wait a minute, it is important. And because I thought it wasn't important, here's the other mistake I did. <clears throat> I never set any financial goals for my life. I just thought, you know, I, I pray. Like, like I, I find people, hey, this is a year of increase. God's going to give us more and what? Well, how much is more? 
Just mold. Okay, here's a penny. You got more. Now don't complain at the end of next year, you got an extra penny. See, I never set any financial goals. I never had any targets. Until my multi-million dollar friend looked at me and said, Keith, how much money you got in the bank? I said, $247. He said, wow, I can tell. He said, uh, what's, your, what's your financial goal? Praise the Lord, whatever the Lord's will is. So it's the Lord's will for you to have $247 and living in your mother-in-law's hell hole. Yeah, it must be, Lord, it must be. He said, no, Keith. He said, Keith, you need to set a goal at the beginning. Your first goal is to set a goal to be a millionaire. A millionaire? He said, yeah. He said, not for the money, the possessions, or the houses. You need to set a goal to become a millionaire for the person you will have to become in order to achieve such a lofty goal. He said, obviously the person you are right now, all you can handle is 240 measly dollars. And he said, setting small goals isn't going to grow you, Keith. Why do we set goals? Why do we dream big? Because we see big, big, and then we have to grow into the dream. And some of you have never had a target. That's why you never hit it. So I want to challenge every person under the sound of my voice. If you're not a millionaire, it's not an issue of do you want to be. You have to be at least a millionaire, even a decamillionaire, if you're going to live any kind of life in your future. Who's ready to make that decision today? The difference between the rich and the poor, they decide to go there. The poor and middle class, they never decide. And some of you are trapped in middle class because you have so much, you you, you don't, you stop dreaming. You lost the hunger, you lost the fire, you got comfortable. And God is saying, wait a minute, we got buildings to build. Wait a minute, we're talking about the expansion of Jesus House Ministries. Wait a minute, we, we got some families to help. We got some, oh, come on, somebody help me up in here. He's saying, stop being so selfish. I don't, I don't feel no love in this house. Come on, take your hand out like this. Take out, say, oh, I love this guy. I love this guy. He's telling me the truth. Come on, just say he's telling me the truth. We're selfish. We got so much. And God's saying, I don't need you in middle class. I need you to move up to the next level this year. How many of you like to have a financial life with no stress? Come on, give me a wave. No stress. No worry about tomorrow. It's a wonderful life to live. And that's where God wants you to live. I say often, what's the number one cause of divorce? No, it's marriage. (laughs) Just joking, just joking. We all know it's money. It's money issues. We got a money problem, but we bury our heads under the sand and act like we don't have no problem. How are you? I'm blessed. No, you ain't. You're a mess. Tell yourself the truth. Watch this. I want to show you. I want to show you. Look at this. Look at this. I want to show you where are you. Where are you financially? I'm going to show you this slide. It's pretty interesting. In order to get where you need to go, here's a new financial reality check. If you're making under $300,000 a year, you are in struggle. You are struggling. The old goal used to be, I want to I be six figures. That's done. We're talking trillions now, and you're still, ta- you're still arguing about six figures. We're talking trillions. You're like, I don't know about being a millionaire. It's like, wake up. 
Three, under 300, you're struggling. 300 and above, you're at the starting line to building wealth. One million a year, you got success. Ten millions a year, oh, we want to talk about significance in the church. Right there's where you need to be in order to live a significant lifestyle. You see where we're at? So that gives you a reality. Some of you are so far behind. The first goal you need to set, I need to make $400,000 a year. Everybody say, I need to make how much? Think about it. Why does the government keep telling you, we're not going to tax anybody over $400,000? Do you think it's just some number they just pull out of the sky? No, they know that every American needs to make $400,000 to become wealthy over their lifetime. So you got to set a goal. $400,000 is my starting line. So that should tell you, what am I doing at this job making 50000 making 80000 this is not enough. I'll take that hand clap. I'll take that hand. Thank you for... Somebody's got to tell you. Some, I'm here to challenge you. I'm not here to comfort you. I'm here to challenge you. Mistake number three. I only had one source of income. <clears throat> what put me in my mother-in-law's house was thinking in ones. <laughs> my million-dollar mentor, he, he, was, he was like at $10 million then. Now he's at $100 million. He said to me, he said, Keith, he said, one is a losing number. Everybody say, one is a loser. Most of you have one source called a job. And if you, you lose that one source, what happens to you? You're finished. You're bankrupt. One times 100,000 is what? It's a losing number. One times a million is what? It's a losing number. If that one goes away, you're finished. But what if you do 10? Most multimillionaires have six to 10 streams of income. And see, you think you've got enough time to watch the football games, play video games, Watch uh, Atlanta's Housewives. And I can't figure it out, ladies. They ain't none of them married. It's like, what's up with that stupid show? You watching it, wishing you were them and you had the money they had, wasting all your time on income-reducing activities. Oh, I got on you, ladies, but I'm going to get on the men. <laughs> then you men watching, watching all the sports and then wearing their jerseys. Oh, aren't you cool? The only place where men wear other men's names on their back is in prison. Yeah, guys, go take your, go, go take your little jerseys and burn them. And won't you go get another jersey Put your name on it. Put your business on it. Get you a hat with your business on it. Come on, somebody. Stop being in love with them and you build your wealth. You build your success. Come on, somebody clap on that. Not one of those football players is going to give you a dime for wearing their jerseys. Put your arms around yourself, guys. Give yourself a big hug. They ain't doing nothing for you. Zero. But keeping you broke. That's what they're doing. I had one source. I, 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 then I discovered the power of multiple resources. And then that's how I crushed debt. I got multiple resources coming into my life. And instead of one source, I had multiple sources. And then I swallowed up all my debt. And in three years, everything was changed. Come on, give me a hand clap here, huh? Come on. 
I got a little something for all of you guys before we go. My time is up. I created what's called Fast, Fast Track University, Financial Fast Track University. And what I did was is I wanted to, I literally took all the strategies that I learned from my multi-million dollar mentor that helped me change everything in three years. And I put it into a 15-day university. The reason why I, I did 15 days, because the Bible says that it was only a 15-day journey to the promised land, but it took them 40 long years. And I said, what, what if, if people hear me talk about money, what if in 15 days I can just come into their life and teach them everything as fast as possible that they need to know about how to break into millionaire and decamillionaire status. And that's where I created it. If, if the guys will show the picture, it comes with my book, my new book, Financial Fast Track. It comes with the audio program where I went in the studio. I just read the whole book. So if you don't like to read, you can listen to it on audio. Delivered to your email. 15 days in a row, I'm going to come for 15 days in a row, and I'm going to walk you through a mental mind shift and give you a new plan on how to change your finances. You'll get one of those. you get a follow-along workbook. It's literally a 15-day quick, quick university. And what we did was is online, if you, if you give me another click there, online, and we've never done this before, but I told my team, I said, man, I want to do something special. Yeah, that's the book. Go ahead, give us another click, would you guys? This is my whole thing, my whole financial fast track. You get the PDFs, you get the books, you get everything. And, uh, and also you get what I call my coaching experience called Release the Emergency Break. I help you identify the one belief system in your mind that's keeping you from financial turnaround. The whole training program is $2,500. So it's a total value of $3,490.00. And special live offer when I go live is normally $297. I told my team, I said, listen, what I want to do, I want to put all this package together. I told them, I know it's normally $297, but for this church, I want to do a special. It's crazy. For $99, you can get enrolled. $99. I said, I want to make it doable. Now, here's how you could do. You could just take your phone out right now if you want to pick that up. And you can scan that URL code. My, my team has made it $99. In the back, we have some postcards. So if you're not like real techie, <laughs> some of you like, not all of us are up to the techie stuff yet. If you're not real techie, as soon as you walk out, the guys have a, a, a thing back there. And we have a little postcard. You can fill out your name, your email address, and all that. And put it on the back of the card. And sign up, and my team, I'll take it back home. My team will set every single one of you. It's my gift to you. It, it's a, it's a $3,000 program. I'm letting you guys in this. I got to charge because if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. <laughs> so I put it down as low as I possibly can. So before we go, <clears throat> now is the time. Everybody say, now is the time. Now is the time for you. To make a decision, you're going to change what you believe about money. Now is the time to set some financial goals that are so big, it totally changes everything about you. It will change where you live. It'll change the cars you drive. It'll change your ability to be able to help your friends and your family. And most importantly, to change how much money you can give to the kingdom of God. Now is the time. Everybody say, now is the time. Now is the time to get this internalized. Everybody say, internalized. You got to memorize. Then you internalize so that you can maximize your financial potential. Somebody say, oh, yeah. yeah. Now is the time for turnaround. In one day, God took the children of Israel out of poverty out of the land of lack, and in one day they left with all the wealth of Egypt. Somebody clap on that. Everybody say one day. 
Job lost everything. Six months later, God said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. Six months, everything changed. Come on now. Isaac was in a famine. He sowed in a famine. And bam, in that same year, God gave him a hundredfold. I'm just here to tell you, God can turn some things around for you fast, but it's in the moment of decisions. We have to decide today. I'm looking for the fast way out of this situation, and I'm going to believe by faith that God's going to turn it around. If God can do it for Keith, God can do it for me. Come on, somebody clap if you believe it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody say, I believe that quickly God's going to turn things around for me. Come on, let's clap on that. Come on. Faster, going to make your head sweet.